have to give birth. Yes, Your Honor. At this time, if it, the court deems it appropriate, I think the family of Heather would like to address the court. I'll be delighted to hear from it. It is certainly appropriate time for them to be heard. Debbie, if you carry the phone, come stand right here. <coughs> Yes, sir. Terry uh, Ellis. <clears throat> Don't you worry, you take your time. It's been a long five years. Almost six. Every day, you wake up, it's the same thing. Sounds like it's like it's just a one and done thing, but it's not. It's every day. So for the past almost six years, it's a continuous assault. It hasn't gone away. No one will tell us permanent harder than that. At this point. some of the things that have been said or, or felt. In fact, I, I understand them, and, and you, you don't fault yourself for that, sir. And I, my only wish for you and your family and all of your loved ones, and I know that and I, if I thought for a second that just telling you to walk out would satisfy what you're looking for, I would do it in a heart. I really would, because I understand and I appreciate it how magnanimous that, that statement that you just made is that you're not looking to punish, you just want some closure for a lot of things. I just hope that somehow this will bring some peace to you, sir, and that you can start your demo. And I'm here right, it, it will never come back to what it was the, the day she left, before she left. But I hope you can find some peace in your life and enjoy the what's left and, and that's what you're entitled to, so thank you very thank much. You. you bet. Yes, ma'am. No, no, I'm not going to appeal emotionally to you. I know you can't make your judgment and your sentence based on that, so I want to appeal to what we need and what you can justify legally. We need hope. And I just want to explain what I mean by that. Sure. All these years, we've been hanging on to the hope of what's hanging over his head, and what's hanging over his wife's head, the charges, and the trials, and the sentencing. The community, they waged war on the community because their only defense was to attack everyone else, and they retaliated. If he did that one right thing, just tell us where our daughter was, everything would have ended. The retaliation from the community would have ended. The charges would have been over. The torment for his family would have been over. All these things were hanging over his head 
but all these things were that hope that we were hanging on to, that one right thing would have changed this up here. With this burden, in this trial, when she sentenced, it's all over. But it's not over. Heather's still gone. There's nothing else holding over his head. So what I'm asking you is to give us a little more quick. Don't just give him 30 years to run the current like his wife got. There's, there's not enough room to work with that. He's receiving false hope from a civil attorney that he's going to get rich and exonerated in a civil case. He has that hope, which I believe is why he didn't plead in this one. If he has 60 years, we have something to work with. We have something to go back on. And it's only a little window of time, a little window of hope, and it's all that he only has left. So I'm asking you if you'll just give us as much as you possibly can to work with. He's not stopped his crime. He kidnapped, and you read the definition of the law. Until he releases her, she's kidnapped. And he hasn't given her back. He's still holding her hostage from us. So until he stops his crime, he's still committing it. There's no remorse. I'm just asking that you justify his sentence by the fact he won't stop. He won't admit what he's done. He won't take responsibility. And he's still committing it to this day. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Elvis. Yes, Elvis. Uh, most people know that I never am at a loss for words. In fact, I don't shut up. <laughs> That's okay. I've been accused of that too. Yes. <laughs> I know you've heard them talk about the ways that you think that it's impacted them. And this is meant to be a victim's impact statement. And I'd like to talk a little bit about what I've witnessed being taken away. Because it didn't stop at taking away Heather from our family. Because every day, I watch my dad turn into somebody that he is not. And I watch my brother hide away from the world. And I watch my mother turn into somebody that's just a shell of the person she used to be. And I can't witness my own transformation, but I am positive that it has been drastic. I'm not nearly the woman I was five years ago. And for better or for worse, I don't know. But I can tell you that our family is not the only victim. Our community has suffered and changed in ways that are unimaginable. And I don't know if you've noticed, but their family got up and left. Because they have been a victim in this as well. He has children that he disregarded and put them in line of fire when he made this action against our family. And I think that that's something we should remember. But it wasn't just our family that is affected here, but his own. He couldn't even muster a thought for them. And I think that my dad's right. Even if we let him walk today, that would be fine so long as we could have a funeral, have a coming home, have an answer so that you don't wake up in the morning and have the world crash down around you. It's not so much that it's not fair, it's just what's right and what's wrong. Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, Your Honor, there's nothing else that we can say to. To, to, to give any more life to this. The court knows everything about this case. We know the community knows everything about this case at this point. We know. And at this time, we just defer to the court's judgment. Thank you. Your Honor, there is uh, not much that we can add. Uh, we understand the court has all of the basic background information about Mr. Moore, you know, he's married, he has children, you know, what kind of work he does, his educational background. Uh, we were in this position, Your Honor, at the end of the obstruction of justice trial. And 
Some things have changed for Sidney since then. Uh, he has been sentenced to 10 years. Uh, during that time, he's participated in several programs in the Department of Corrections trying to improve and better himself. Uh, Your Honor, he is in the late program at Lee Correctional. Um, he is also in the Jump Start program and the Violence Prevention program. Uh, Your Honor, he works in maintenance at the, at the facility, uh, basically doing the same work that he did when he was on the street. Um, Your Honor, I have represented a lot of people in this courtroom over the last 20 years. And I can say for the vast majority of them, you could probably see an outcome like this coming. Um, we hate to say it, but just you know, the background, the, the educational history, the job history, people just aren't equipped. Some people just aren't equipped for, for making it in civil society. Uh, Mr. Moore, it's not that way. He doesn't have a prior record, didn't have a record before any of this. Uh, he, he, just an average Warren County citizen, um, just the kind of guy that you would have a deal with afterwards. Uh, and Your Honor, uh, there's no, not much that we can say as far as the uh, uh, families are concerned. It, it is true that both families have suffered greatly from all of this. While all of this begins with him, I would just point out to the court that he did not when looking for this uh, situation, he just kind of ended up in it. He was not looking for trouble at any time. Yeah. Your Honor, we have received the jury's verdict. We respectfully disagree with it. He denies any involvement. He will continue to do so. Uh, and we understand that the court has a decision to make. Uh, we ask Your Honor to simply take into consideration the fact that he did not have a prior record before all of this, taking into consideration the positive things that he's done in the time that he has been at the correctional so far, and we would ask the court to temper justice with mercy in this case. Thank you, Mr. Governor. More of is there anything you wish to say, sir? You don't have to, but I'm fortunate the opportunity. If I could give them closure, I would. I mean, anything I tell them would be a lie. There's nothing I can tell them to give them any closure. I understand I have children in my home. I get it. There's just nothing I can give them for closure. Right. Well, thank you, sir. And I know, I know they've suffered probably way more than mine. Yes, and I feel bad for them. I really do. Nothing I can give them. And I'm sorry that I can't. Well, I'm confident of that um, as well. Thank you, sir. All right, anything else? No, Your Honor. Well, the one thing that I've said over and over, and I don't know that I appreciated it as much when I was a lawyer as I do as, now as a judge, is my heart goes out to the Elvis family and the extended families. Um, There's just no words to describe what but anything can be said to alleviate what you have suffered and will suffer. Um, and I mentioned this early on that I saw the hurt of my father with his father being tragically murdered and how he had to deal with that his entire life. And it was, he was, as I've said before, he was a bitter man and he took his last breath at 81. I know that there's a reason now for having a court of common pleas and a general sessions court because it's that common pleas deals with everything you've talked about your loss what you've experienced that's what I was privileged to do some of my practice was representing persons that suffered damages and trying to get compensation for their damages what I do in a sentence can never be construed as compensation for anything it's not. And it should never be considered that way. Because that's left for another branch of, of, of our court. And in this case, 
I understand your wish. And I, if I was standing there, I'd be saying the same thing. I really would. But in this case, Ms. Moore has been convicted and the, the concurrent sentence was imposed. And what I've heard in this case as evidence, and I, I don't have to conclude this, it's just a fact uh, that I think there was a conspiracy, was no question, there was a conspiracy. The dominant figure, we all can have opinions about that, but I think that my opinion is that she was the dominant figure in this, in this action. Uh, just from everything, and probably the most compelling one was the testimony of the gentleman we worked with for uh, to me. And for that reason, and I'm, I'm going to do this, so uh, I'll let the Department of Corrections figure out what time he's entitled to. Yes, sir. I'm not going to make that call um, because I, I, he was punished for that one, and he served the time to punish for the obstruction. If the department chooses to give you credit, so be it. I don't choose to do that in my sentence. But I will sentence him to 30 years on each one and run them concurrent. And uh, I hope he'll continue to do something that he's doing. It doesn't surprise me. I know it was mentioned early on that I knew his mother and father, and I do. And uh, I was privileged to know them. And the one thing I have come to know the Bible speaks to this, I think it's Luke. Too much is given, much is expected. And I'm paraphrasing that. But I don't find fault with that. I know what he's given. I know the people. And uh, that also is another reason for what I'm doing. Good luck to you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Anything else? Your Honor, that would conclude the state's business. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.